Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. So in this video, I'm gonna explain how you can do the AND operator and the OR operator. So I have this basic example here. So I have three buttons and both of them are connected to formula controllers. So I have the AND version and I have the OR version. So this is just the same thing as an AND gate. And I just wanna emphasize that this like operator, like if you've ever wondered how you can achieve this kind of functionality, you can just use multiplication. So when we're dealing with Boolean values, so we can only have an output of zero or one. So in this case, when we have buttons, this is the case. This is like an easy way to achieve this functionality. So in here, all of these buttons need to be pressed in order for this formula controller to return one. Any one of them is not pressed, it'll always go back to zero. And here with the OR operator, it's enough that just one of these is on. So it could be any one of them. And it can also be all of them. So yeah, this is like the basic example. But then what if we wanted to combine this functionality? So what if we wanted to do an AND and an OR in the same formula? So here's another kind of example. So in here I have A and B or C. And by the way, button one is connected to A, button two is connected to B, and button three is connected to C. So in this case, if I select A, it's not going to be enough on its own to return one. So I also need to select B. So these both need to be on. But then if I select C, like C is kind of independent now from all of this stuff. So now any other thing can be selected, but C on its own is enough to return one because this is saying that A and B or C. And then I have this other example here, which is not A and B or C. So in here I have one minus A and one minus A just means that it's kind of the inverse of A. So if A is zero, this is actually one because one minus zero is one. But if A is selected or pressed, this will be zero now because now it's one minus one, which is zero. So what's gonna happen now that when A is not selected, we can turn this output on by using B, but if A is selected, it's no longer going to be true because this has to be so that both A is not selected and also B is selected. But then with the C again, it's independent from this part. So it's plus meaning or. So now if we just like, if C is on, it's enough to turn the entire thing on and it doesn't matter anymore what we do with all of these other buttons. Okay, so now I wanna move on to a little bit more complicated example using actual case statements. And this is a pretty long formula. Don't be scared. I'm gonna try to explain it <laughs> to the best of my ability. This has four options and I have this very <laughs> nice looking slider here. So four options and I can choose it with this slider. And then I also have this enable LFO selector. So if I press enable LFO, so this is at 100%, it means that these options like are working. So the LFO is working. So I'm gonna show you, I've connected this entire thing into the mod X of a citrus and you could connect this to any parameter you like. So here my LFO is not currently enabled. So the mod X is doing nothing. It's just outputting zero. But now when I enable LFO, it starts moving. And now you can see that when I change the shape, it's gonna behave differently. So what's happening in this formula controller is that I'm feeding a sine wave from a peak controller into input A. Input B is connected to this enable LFO button. And finally, input C is connected to the choose shape slider. And in here, I have this long formula. <laughs> so this entire thing is basically just a giant OR gate. So it's like this thingy here, or this thingy here, or <laughs> you get the idea, I think. <laughs> So this, these case statements are essentially the if statements of this formula. So what this is saying is if B is one and also C is zero, return A. 
and it falls return zero. And A, as you remember, is connected to the peak controller here on the map side. So the first option is just outputting this sine wave as is. I'm just choosing to return A. So what this is equivalent to is an if statement with the AND operator. So multiplication corresponds to the AND operator. So in this case, B has to be true. So B is this enable LFO button. So if this is not on, this if statement is never going to return one because now we're doing zero times something, which is going to be zero. And then the second condition that also needs to be true is obviously, is this slider at the correct position? So if it's something else, even if LFO is enabled, this is not going to output the A, it's going to output the square one, which is the rounding function. So it's the second shape. So in the second if statement or the case statement, I have B, and this part. So, so this is to get the correct knob position. So I have this knob divided into four parts. So I have like four possible values. I have zero, one, two, and three. I'm going to put a card on the screen where I explain a little bit of this option selector stuff. I'm not going to explain it here, but you can watch that video and this will make a lot more sense after that. But anyway, the point is that here I'm also determining is the enable LFO option on and also is the slider at the correct position, which is shape two because shape two is the square one. And then in the third option, I have this tension shape and this works exactly the same way. So it's this one. It's a little bit hard to read and <laughs> see what's happening here because it's just on one line. Yeah, this is my next thing to complain about. I want like a formatted text editor into formula controller. <laughs> and finally, here is the final option, which is also a tension function, but it has like a square root thing inside of it to make it a little different. So hopefully this will help people realize that you can do this kind of a programming style logic in the formula controller. But yeah, I think that that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Please like it if you thought it was interesting and consider subscribing if you want to see more Patcher Formula Controller tutorial stuff. And also leave a comment on what you thought of this video. And yeah, I will see you in the next one.